This is Julie Gavin and today I'm going to show you how I made my granny squares and assembled my granny squares from my granny square stockings. Now I had posted this on the blog and so if you want the full instructions you can go to the newlighterlife.com and just search for granny square stocking. I'll also try to remember to put a link in the description to where I give the directions for these stockings but after I posted it, there were some questions and it was mostly surrounding the assembly of the toe and the heel part of the stocking. Um, so today I'm going to just go through and I'm, I'm going to show you how I make my granny squares. I did change something slightly on the pattern, but as long as you're making uh, granny squares and follow this basic outline, if you have a specific way that you like to make granny squares, then um, this will work for you. So. I just wanna go through and show you real quick before we get started though, let me just show you what you need. So for my stockings, I have three different colors of worsted weight yarn. So you're gonna need three skeins, depending on how many you make. Um, these are kind of my leftovers because I made several different stockings this past year. You're also gonna need either a size H or size I hook. Uh, more recently, I'm working with the H and I prefer it. So today I'm gonna use the H hook. You'll need a scissor, uh, an embroidery or tapestry needle, and as you can see, the eye of it is very big, so it's really easy to blunt on the end. It's really easy to sew these uh, stockings together. And lastly, we have some fabric fusion. I most um, recently got this, um, started using fabric glue to tie up my ends, and I prefer it. So that's what I'm using today, and I'll just show you that really quick. All right, so let's get started. First of all, you need to have your center or your foundation for your granny square. I'm doing my center in red. Now there's two ways you can do a foundation for a granny square. The most traditional way is that you would do a slip knot and then chain four, and then you would join your last chain to your first chain with a slip stitch, and then you would create your loop. However, more recently, um, I just think it's become popular to do a magic loop because you can make your foundation as tight as it needs to be depending on the stitches. It's just very simple. So this is how I do my magic loop. I hold my yarn with my thumb over my two fingers. My tail is coming over and I'm gonna wrap, it, wrap the yarn around my two fingers again and cross it over. And some, it helps just to have like a cross, but you're gonna go under the first one, the bottom stitch or bottom piece, bottom yarn over the one that you just ended the wrap around with, yarn over and grab it with the hook. And then you're gonna go back over and grab the top yarn again with your hook and you're gonna pull it through. So this is my foundation. Now, if you opted to do the more traditional, you would do, like I said, slip, uh, a slip knot, chain four, and you'd make your ring. Well, this, our ring is already made now. So I can just start doing my granny square clusters, four sets of three clusters. The clusters are double crochets, but I have to get my height on my first one. I can't just start doing a double crochet. So it's gonna be four sets of three. So to get my first one, most common I see people do two chain to get their first one, but I'm going to do three chain it's just my preference and i would say this is already my first chain for my foundation from my foundation so my round one i'm gonna do chain three two double crochets chain one three double crochets chain one three double crochets chain one i'm losing track <laughs> you're gonna get basically four clusters of three so i'm gonna just do this first cluster and then i'm gonna speed it up and then we'll go to the second round and I'll show you how I change my colors. So here we go. I have my one chain. I'm going to go two, three. Okay. Now I'm going to do two double crochet. So wrap the yarn around, go through the hoop or the loop, pull up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, 
Same thing, now I'm gonna do my third, it's really my second double crochet, but my third for this purpose. Yarn over, going through the loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So here is my first cluster of three, because I'm counting my first chain. Now the rest of this round one, it's going to be a chain one, three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, chain one, three double crochets, and I'm gonna end with a chain. So I'll meet you back here with ending with our chain. here we are so this is the end of my first round I have three chain or I'm sorry three double crochet but one of them was that chain three I have a chain one three double crochet chain one three double crochet chain one and three double crochet so it doesn't look very good but this is where the magic loop really is handy all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten it up and um, just a reminder at the last I did a chain one after my third double crochet of my fourth cluster. You're gonna have one between every one and that's no exception for the end. So I have a little space there. And now I need to just join my round so it's a circle. Just make sure that you're joining to the right stitch. So there's a, there are these Vs at the top of your round. And so you wanna join with a slip stitch through both pieces of yarn and the V stitch. So here, this, this V, aligns with this third double crochet this v goes with the second and this v goes with our chain so i'm simply going to insert my hook through both and pull the yarn through both and now this is the end of my first round and <clears throat> so what you want to do is you just want to Snip your yarn. We'll set that aside. And you're just gonna pull your yarn through. Now you need to secure it because it's just gonna come out. So the way I like to secure is I find a spot on the back and um, just a stitch that you're not gonna see from the front. And I'm just gonna insert my hook. I'm gonna grab my yarn pull it through part way, and then I'm gonna pull through again on itself. So I'm just making a little knot and then you're gonna tighten it down. All right, so now that we're done with our first round, we need to do our second round. And for this, I'm going to use a, like a cream or an off-white kind of color. And I prefer not to attach my second color to where I just made this knot or where that you know chain three was. So I'm gonna go back just one more cluster and I'm going to attach this in the space of that chain one. So let me just pull through this yarn. And now once I pull it through, I'm gonna simply tie a knot and there's gonna be a tail and I'm gonna work that tail in. So here we go. It's the same process. So don't, um, it really doesn't get complicated. I think granny squares are probably one of the best beginner projects because you just simply keep repeating the same pattern, but you're going to, on this round, instead of having the four clusters of three, you're gonna have eight clusters of three. Each corner is gonna have two clusters of three, two clusters of three, two clusters of three. And then on the next one, you're gonna have 12, which you're gonna have a side one as well. Okay, now I do feel like this is a good time to stop. So I did my first three double crochets, a chain one space, and now I have my second three double crochets. Now you're gonna do your chain, and now you're gonna move over to your next chain space. So that's essentially where you put all your chain three or double crochet clusters, go in chain one spaces. So um, that is the basic pattern that we follow throughout. I'm at the end, I've done my chain one, and I'm gonna join it the exact same way. Well, here we 
are. We are on our last round and I ended right here. I tied it off just like before. And I'm just gonna join, start this round with my green in this chain one space. You're doing 12 clusters of three double crochets. And so on the side, you're only gonna have one cluster of three double crochets. On the corners, you're gonna have two. So that's how they come apart. So two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 is where your trip, your clusters of three. So let me do this one real quick again. Starting the same way, we're gonna end the same way. All right, I'm at the end. I finished with my chain one, and I'm just gonna double check my counting. And we're good. So I'm gonna connect it the same way. And now let me show you how I glue my squares. So apparently <laughs> gluing in the crocheting community can be a very volatile topic. So I have done granny squares and just crocheting for years without gluing and inevitably a piece of yarn or a tail comes out. And with granny squares, there are so many of them. I feel like it's not really worth the risk. Plus you don't really wash these very often. So, um, I'm going to just show you really quickly. Um, what I do when I'm looking at these is like, this is my foundation. My magic loop is right here. So I want to tighten that down as tight as it needs to be. And now I'm just going to um, knot it similar to how I'm ending them off. I'm just grabbing one strand of yarn. If I can get in here, I'm going to grab one and I'm going to just knot it onto that strand of yarn to secure it. So tighten down your knot and my center is really tight. It's nice, even. And now I'm, I'm just gonna tuck it in a tiny bit. So I pull the stitch back and I'm gonna put a tiny, tiny amount of fabric glue. right at the base so does not take much at all it's just the smallest amount and it is a little bit tacky so you need to give it just a little bit of time to um to cure all the way but see it's kind of got a little fuzzy i just press it down on that and then i can snip my yarn closer so none of these tails are going to peek through it's just going to be very neat and tidy in the front. So I'm gonna do this for all of my pieces of yarn. What you need to complete the granny square is you need 16 single squares, which will be four sets of three and one set of four. So if you there's a couple ways you can connect them. I'm just gonna show you on this one, even though um, I don't need another four, I'm just gonna show you because I've already connected what I need to show you for today. If you wanna do the same color, you're welcome to do that, or you can do um, a contrast color, it doesn't really matter. But what you can do is you can insert your hook into that corner chain one space, insert into the other blocks, corner chain one space, and you can, basically do an offset color and um, cro single crochet along. Or the other way you can do it is simply by taking your tapestry needle and using some yarn and basically whip stitching your blocks together. You have, like I said, four groups of single, I'm sorry, four sets of three strips and that is one two three four your four strip set is for your heel portion so let me just for these ones on the top you're simply going to make you're going to stitch them together and you're going to make like a circle and then you're going to sew them together so they are you know so you have your three 
Now for the toe, this is where it can get confusing. So if I had connected this three strip block the same as before, I would have simply done this and, you know, whip stitched it together or single crocheted it together and I would have had a circle, but I don't want to do that. Somehow I have to create this. So if you're struggling with how to look at this, this is essentially what you're doing. You need this. If you just fold this block on itself, that is this portion. Now you need this portion to be the same. So I'm going to flip it up and I'm going to whip stitch this portion here. Now what's best to do is to start here and sew this all the way along here and then sew it all the way along here because you need your bottom toe to be closed up. So just to, again, I have my, my correct side down. This is the wrong side where I have all my tails that I've cut and glued. I'm going to fold it over so I have my toe and then I'm going to flip this up so I have this portion and now you're going to sew it from here down to here so it's all enclosed. So here I am at the end. I've sewn from here to here. And when I originally sewed these blocks together, I had a little tail. Well, I actually probably cut it a little bit too short, but I'm gonna just cut this and I'm gonna knot it and tuck it in on the inside because this is our outside. Um, so that is it for my toe portion. Let me do that really quick. So guys, I messed up and I didn't actually record me explaining how to set up your heel portion, but this is the basic layout that you want to follow. You're going to lay your strip, your four block strip face down, right side down, and then your far left block, you're going to turn it so that it creates a corner or a triangle. And then you're going to bring your far right block over and you're going to sew that one seam down to create your heel strip. All right. So as you can see, we've completed this right here. This is the same strip and it would be hanging off, which is weird, but we're not going to deal with this portion yet. First, we're going to sew our toe. Same way we did the top portion, we're going to sew our toe um, to our bottom, or I'm sorry, our heel strip to our toe strip. And just keep in mind as you move along, you want these to all line up. So when you get to the actual heel portion, you are gonna leave this open. So I'm gonna sew from here all the way to the front and then ending right here. This is gonna be open and I'll show you that when I'm done. Okay, now as you get to the front, you're just going to flip it over and you wanna make sure this corner is landing on this seam here. So, um, and just keep on sewing. So 
now for this portion, I'm just going to keep stitching and make sure that this is completely closed up and then we'll deal with this portion, the actual heel portion. So if this helps, here, let me flip this so it makes better sense. So we're right here, right here. We're gonna just make sure this is really closed up before we sew up the heel. So here we are, this is all sewn up, um, and then my heel portion is still open. So in order to get this heel to be uh, straight across versus, or to smooth smoothly, um, to tailor up, you need to turn your foot inside out, and then you're going to sew along up until the corner of your um, center, or your first round. So let me, turn this inside out and actually I'm just going to push my needle in so that my string is on the inside because I'm just going to keep using the same string or yarn. All right so here we are my right sides are together my foot underneath is all sewn up this is all sewn up and now I'm going to just stitch um, almost like a, I think a stem stitch. If you do any kind of embroidery, just up and down, up and down, up and down. You can also just take this and put it on a sewing machine and just sew from this corner where it's open, from this corner up to that point, to the center of that red. And then once you turn it right side out, it's gonna have this edge. It is a little bit bulkier, but it gives it the right shape that you're gonna need for your stocking. Once I get up to my corner, I like to go back down again, and then I can use my tail to tie off any ends and make any knots. Um, but that just reinforces it more, and then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm all done with this portion. And now let me show you, I'll, I'll glue it and then I'll turn it around so you can see what it looks like on the outside. All right, so that is the end of really the hard portion of making the granny square crocheted stockings, um, handling the foot, the heel, and then now all you'll need to do is uh, whip stitch on or single crochet on your three remaining three block strips. And then at the top, you're going to single crochet along the top and then create your hanger. And that's it, you have a cute, quaint, country, um, vintage, granny square crochet stocking. And hopefully these pictures and videos are helpful for you to um, be able to get past the confusing portions, which are these two, um, the toe and the heel portion. If you guys have questions or maybe something wasn't as clear, please feel free to comment, um, ask a question. Um, if I can take another picture and, and help out with that on the blog, you know, by all means, um, I just love this pattern. It so speaks my grandma to me. And um, so hopefully this was helpful to you guys and enjoy your crocheting. Have a great day. Bye.